Now I want to give a proof of the so-called third isomorphism theorem. Sometimes it's called the second isomorphism theorem, sometimes first. So the literature it ha doesn't have a standard uh, uh, homogeneous uh, name naming of these theorems. Anyway, this is what I mean. We have two subgroups, uh, N and H, normal subgroups. of group G and H contains N then the isomorphism is between this double quotient or even triple maybe and G over H. So here again, just like in the video of the second isomorphism theorem, we immediately observe that all these uh, quotients imply that here some, some of these groups have to be normal in their uh, corresponding ambient group where we take the quotient. So um, for example, uh, here we see that N has to be quotient, has to be normal inside H. Which is a priori not given, right? And also uh, this big quotient here by this group uh, means implies that one has to check a priori that H over N is normal inside this quotient group. So before attacking the proof of the theorem, I would suggest that we concentrate in understanding this guy here, this quotient group. Okay, we all know what a quotient group is, but maybe uh, it's not immediately clear how to uh, study its subgroups, since here we are going to take a quotient by some subgroup. In fact, what we can prove is the following description for the subgroups of the quotient G over N. These subgroups correspond to uh, subgroups of G containing N. So what I mean is that in this set, between this set and the set of uh, subgroups of uh, the quotient G or N, they are, they there is a bijective correspondence. So we can think of uh, subgroup subgroups of the quotient as subgroups of the original group G containing the the group by which we are quotienting. So let's first uh, prove this bijective correspondence. Somehow we have to construct something, and the most obvious thing to do when we start from, a, say, a, a subgroup H of G, which contains N, is to associate to this the quotient H over N. Now, to show that this uh, correspondence is uh, objective, we want to prove that each subgroup of G over N is of this form. So here is what we do. Let's pick some subgroup, any subgroup of uh, G or N, let's call it F. We 
we want to provide some H subgroup uh, of G such that the quotient H over N is F. Okay, so this F now is uh, a subgroup of G over N. So the element of F uh, is just a bunch of, uh, of cosets of N. In other words, I write, so say the set F uh, by some coset GI with the element I, so cosets of N for some GIs in the group G. Now, I define explicitly H as follows. I define it as the set precisely as I take these JIs here and I consider them as elements uh, in G, as what they are, and I study this set G. So such that Gn is in F. In other words, this G is precisely one of these Ji's. Now, I leave it to you to check. Maybe you can pause the video for a minute and check on a piece of paper that clearly H is a group. And also uh, contains n. So now what is the quotient by n uh, of this h? So let's write it down. h over n, well it will be cosets of n, right? So it will be a bunch of cosets, gi's uh, times n, such that gi's are in h. But now this condition here, GIs are in H, by the definition of H, it means precisely this uh, coset is in F. Sorry. And therefore, this is just equal to this same, the same GIs that we have here for the uh, description of F. So well, this is basically by the definition, by the definition of H. So now we have a better understanding of these subgroups of G or N, and we pass to the the, the central part of this uh, of this exercise, which is to prove to prove our isomorphism. So G over N. I repeat uh, over H over N is isomorphic. We want to show that we have such an isomorphism. So this is our, our question, what we want to prove. And here again, uh, similar to the video on the second isomorphism theorem, I adopt the following strategy. I uh, realize, I try to realize this group H over N as the kernel. I realize sorry, H over N as uh, as kernel of a surjective group morphism between, say, let's call it phi, between g over n and g over n, over um, h, here, the target. So, of course, this would give uh, 
this yields once we once we have this then we know by the fundamental theorem of on homomorphism that the quotient of this guy here by the kernel of this map of this map has to be isomorphic to the image of phi and if we prove that this is surjective then of course this would be the whole g over h and this would be just what we uh, want to show namely that g over m over h over m is isomorphic to this so let's construct this morphism I define phi uh, to be the obvious map that maps a left coset G n to the corresponding coset for H. So the first thing that we observe is that this map is well defined since we are defining this map on a quotient so on the cosets we really have to uh, always have to check that uh, suppose i choose a different representative for, for uh, this coset a n let's call it b then uh, what i have well, by definition, a times b minus 1 is inside n, which of course is a subgroup of h, and therefore h uh, times a, uh, sorry, a times h is equal to b times h. So this shows that the map here is well defined. Secondly, this is a morphism. Why is it a morphism if I compose, or if I multiply, say, phi of a n times phi of b n, then what I get is uh, h, a uh, h, times inside g over h inside this group times b h which is equal to a b since this is the product in g over h a b h a b times h and this is equal to uh, of course the phi of a b Um, n, which I of course can rewrite as phi by using the group structure in G over n as a n times b n, product of these two left cosets. And this is what we have here is precisely showing that phi is a morphism of groups. Next, I need to show that the map is surjective. Well, this is almost uh, tautological, but let me write it down anyway. So, suppose I take um, a coset of H in quotient G of H, then of course. Uh, G N is a coset in the quotient g n g over n and uh, clearly phi of g n is equal to g h so this is also checked and the map is surjective and finally we show that the kernel is precisely 
what we are interested in, namely, well, by definition, this would be the set of cosets Gm such that the map, so Gh, the element corresponding to Gn under phi, is mapped to the identity element, which is the coset H itself. And in, in this, uh, this condition, of course, is uh, equivalent to G being in H. Therefore, this is equal to the set to the set Gn, such that G is in H. And this is, you recognize, is precisely the definition of H over M. So this concludes our proof.